From the campus studios of Saarland University, this is Ropecast, a lighthearted podcast for learners of English, with Roger Charlton and Peter Tischer. Hi folks, welcome to Ropecast and welcome back, Roger. Thank you, Peter. I'm so glad that you're back on the show. Not to say that I didn't enjoy the guests I had <laughs> in the past few episodes, but I'm really, really happy to see you again. And I hope our listeners are happy to, well, hear you again. I hope so too. Yeah, great. And you came back just in time for our third in a series of four of recommendations for English Christmas gifts. Yeah. Uh, we're going to talk about nonfiction books That's today right. yeah. that uh, learners of English should read. Maybe everybody should read. Mm -hmm. uh, I see you have a list there, don't you? A very short one. Okay. Uh, I would like, can I go first? Because I have just a little brief recommendation. Bruce Springsteen, Born to Run. Oh, yeah. It's, it's a song I know, but Born to Run is his autobiography. Just came out. One of the greatest musicians of our time. Yeah. Uh, to me, somebody who is ready for the Nobel Prize, just like <laughs> Bob Dylan. And his autobiography is just fantastic, I've, fun to read. I've read rave reviews. Yeah, uh, and I, I sort of raced through it. So, well, it's the boss. Enough said. <laughs> okay. Read it, folks. <laughs> yeah. What do you have? <laughs> Actually, it's, uh, there's something of an American um, theme to, to this. You started with an American publication by an American. Mm -hmm. And the first on my list is also an American, a very different American, um, a scientist, okay. who is also a Nobel Prize winner, not mm. for literature. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but interestingly, the Nobel Prize was not in his major field. And I think that's significant. So the name is Daniel Kahneman. He's been around for a while. He's been around for a while. Yeah. His, um, the book I want to recommend was published in 2011. So it's been around quite a while, but it was only recently that I discovered it. Uh -huh. And I thought, this is a book everybody has to be aware of, because I just think we all need to know some of the stuff that he presents here. What's the title? It's called Thinking, Comma, Fast and Slow. Uh-huh. Okay. And he's, um, I mean, not all of it is new uh, in the sense of he did the research, but he did a lot of research himself with a partner, and he deals with thinking, that is, with the human mind, mm -hmm. and he's not the only one to divide the way our brain works into two spheres or two sections. This is perhaps a little simplistic, but he just calls them system one and system two. Uh -huh. And he reminds us, I think most of us probably know this, that very often we just react automatically. It's not pausing to think, to consider, things happen. Uh -huh. You know okay. this from when you're driving. You don't. If, okay. if something unexpected happens, you can't make a conscious, logical decision about what to do. You just do something. Yeah, you just step on the brakes if there's danger. <laughs> yeah. Right, right. And this applies right across the board to all our situations. Sounds know. sounds fascinating. Hard to read? It's not an easy read in any language, but it is worth pursuing it. And if learners find the English version too tough, there are so many translations of it, it would be very easy to, to read it in another language. Mm -hmm. But I think it's, it's good for really advanced learners. They can, uh, okay. they can follow it easily because it's so well illustrated with diagrams, with examples from everyday life. So you can really relate to this. Also, it's good practice for reading a scientific book. Yeah, I, mean, I would call this popular science, so that's kind of doing it down a little bit. Okay. But it's science for everyone. Okay. Certainly not for specialists. So first on your list, Daniel Kahneman, thinking fast and slow. That's right. What's the second? Well, the second actually comes via my wife, who has a book club for mm -hmm. native speakers of English. Most of them are Americans. Okay. And this was recommended to her, and she read it, and she said, this is fantastic, which it is. And I have to be very careful what I say about it. This is an American family. Because your wife is listening. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to give too much away about the uh, book, okay. because it's, it's almost like a thriller. You, you read it, and maybe finally you figure out what's really going on here. Okay. So it's, it's meant to be a novel, but mm -hmm. it's certainly based on events, real events. Which, again, I think is an interesting read just from the point of view of what are you aware of? What's going on in science? What about the ethics of science? And anyway, with genetic engineering and all kinds of things like that, it's very much in the air. Mm -hmm. I won't actually tell you any, anything more about what field of science is relevant here. But You need to tell us the title. <laughs> yeah, okay. 
So the author is um, Karen Joy Fowler, and the title is We Are All Completely Beside Ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that that, <laughs> that, and, that sounds like a, like a novel for New Year's Eve rather than Christmas. Yeah. Well, it, you have to read quite a way before you figure out why it has this title. So the, the essence of the story is there is an fa American family, the son and a daughter. And the daughter, when she's, I think, five years old, her name is Rosemary, the family adopt a new member. And the two females, the two, two, two youngsters, get along fine, and they live very happily together, learning from each other the way kids do. And then after a while, Rosemary is told to go and live with her grandparents for a little while. Mm -hmm. And when she comes back, she finds Fern, that's, that's the name, Fern is gone. And she doesn't really know why. Suddenly, the family is back to four people instead of five. Okay. And it takes a long time for her to work out what has happened. She kind of blames herself. Well, the novel is written when she's much older and she's looking back and she wants to find out exactly what happened. And she feels guilt about what happened. And above all, it has a very, very profound effect on her brother. Her so, brother just goes off on his own. And but This sounds all like a mystery. What, where are the facts, the real facts that it's based on? I can't say. Ah, okay. You just have to read for yourself. Okay, and okay. I, I, so, everyone... sorry, folks, we can't give it all away. <laughs> I know quite a few people have read it, and they're all very enthusiastic about it. Okay, great. And this is this is not a difficult read. This is a th almost like a thriller. You know, it's, it pulls you along. Okay. We, we're running out of time. Third one. Very quickly, the third one is Alison Gopnik, and it's called The Gardener and the Carpenter. And this is mm -hmm. non-fiction. Okay, about gardening. We've had an episode <laughs> no, about gardening. No, no, no. Actually, um, it kind of triggered thoughts, and I, I found this then after we'd been talking about gardening quite a lot. This is supposedly about parenting, as it's called. Mm -hmm. That is, if so you... Being a parent. Yeah, you know, you are, you have two Raising kids. Raising your yeah? kids, yeah. yes. <laughs> um, she questions the whole idea of parenting. Uh-huh. Do we really need to do some of the things we're doing? And she's thinking particularly about parents who organize their children's lives in such a way that there is really no spare time anymore. So instead of kids going out and playing with other kids and learning accidentally, as, as it were, from all their experiences, you think, no, they have to do music, you know, they have to learn an instrument and they have to do... I, I, can, <laughs> I can sympathize with that thought because yeah. there is a lot of pressure out there yeah, yeah, yeah. on parents nowadays yeah. and you sort of feel guilty if your kid doesn't have an afternoon activity yeah. every yeah. day. Yeah. And I sometimes think, I didn't have that. I don't really miss it. <laughs> so the title refers to, as a carpenter, you take wood and you think you can shape it, you can turn it into something. You have, a, right. you have a, an aim in mind. You have a, mm -hmm. a plan. Right. And you turn turn some wood into a table or a chair or something artistic. The gardener doesn't create plants. He the just gardener, helps them grow. The gardener provides the best environment possible for the seeds put in the ground and sees what comes up. If, it's, uh, if it doesn't succeed, and you think, well, what did I do wrong here? Is it the wrong soil? Or did I water too much? And so on and so forth. Children need okay. gardeners. Right. <laughs> that, well, this may be a book not for the students, I mean, the university students out there listening to us, but no, maybe rather for... I disagree, because I think this has a direct application to language learning. Does it? Do you need a teacher, or can you just acquire a language like kids do when they're growing up? And I uh -huh. think this would be a very interesting thing for another podcast. Oh, we definitely are going to have to talk about that one. Yeah. And as our listeners know, sometimes you can learn English just by sitting around, having your ear pods in, and, uh, of course, tuning into the right podcast, which mm. is Ropecast. Folks, we will be back with other recommendations on the last of our series next week. Uh, until then, goodbye and uh, season's greetings. Bye from me, too. listening to Ropecast, brought to you by Saarland University. 
featuring Roger Charlton and Peter Tischer. Tune in for the next edifying episode on your podcast dial. Thank you.